Welcome to Reseller News. My name is Rich Bassini. Today is October 1st, 2018. Thank you for tuning in. I just want to start off by saying thank you to all the new subscribers. It is greatly appreciated. I hope you get something out of this, this YouTube channel and you keep coming back for more. However, this is going to be a little long and unusual. I have two browsers open up with, two, with plenty of uh, open windows or other browser pages. So I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible, folks. If you could stick around, you might get some good information out of it. If you can't, I understand. You could always check it out at a later time. But anyway, without further ado, let's get right to it. I'm going to click over here, and I'm going to go right over here. <clears throat> First story right here, folks. For those who are new, I do not read uh, all the <laughs> web pages open. I, I just read parts of it, and the rest is up to you. I, however, I will give you the, um, you know, eBay address, eBay address, the uh, URL, and you could uh, check it out like that and uh, pick up where I left off. This one here comes from Fast Company, one word, dot com. And this was published, okay, it came out on uh, September 9th, I mean September 14th, 2018. It says, take Apple's advice, don't rush to buy new iPhone. The best iPhone is the one you already paid for running the latest software. Actually, I got the older one myself, folks. I got the um, iPhone 5S. Uh, it works for me. I have no complaints of it, and uh, so far it's been good. I can't complain. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, folks. It says over here, it just goes on to say, um, like most Apple events, last Wednesday a big iPhone and Apple Watch reveal was a master class in manufacturing desire. For nearly two hours, Apple executives spoke of a larger and more vibrant screens, faster processor, and better cameras, all in the service of making your current iPhone or Apple Watch seem like state like stale bread the <laughs> state i was gonna say um so it was it was uh so it goes on to say here so it was uh it was a bit jarring when lisa jackson apple's vice president of the environment policy and social initiatives took the stage and suddenly uh suggested that you might need uh, might not need a new iphone after all during a five-minute presentation of uh on apple's substantial substantiability uh efforts jackson claimed that the iphones are built to last thereby reducing the environmental impact of making new ones. I'll be honest with you, folks. I have the iPhone 5S. I bought it pre-owned. I bought it off of eBay. <clears throat> and to be honest with you, it works great. I have no complaints with it, no problems with it, thank God. Um, it is an older model, but it works. Why should I go out and spend more money on an Apple, you know, and a new iPhone? I love iPhones, don't get me wrong. Um, and uh, beforehand, I used to have the Sony phone, uh, which was good. It was another good phone. The only thing that was uh, the model I had, uh, it wasn't the camera wasn't it was good, but when it came to low lighting, uh, you had to have lights. You had to be in a real bright area for it to work. Unlike the uh, iPhone I have, uh, in normal lighting, it takes great videos, and uh, that's why I ended up giving it up. And I bought that phone brand new, but this iPhone 5s I bought was uh, pre-owned. But anyway, guys, I don't want to you know talk too much about that. Expand on this particular topic. Um, you could check it out at fastcompany.com. And the story you're looking for is take Apple's advice. Don't rush to buy the new iPhone 8. So let's bump out of here. Here, <clears throat> the next one over here is uh, from tamebay.com. It says over here, read the uh, eBay manage payments, terms and conditions. Now, as you all, whoops, see what happened here. I, I love when this happens, folks. <laughs> it all, This always happens. Every time I want to do something, <laughs> I always get bumped out of here. It's crazy. It drives me crazy. I'm sorry, folks. Um, <clears throat> this story came out. It's from Dan Wilson on September 28, 2018. Um, it goes on to say here, well, the topic is, oh, you read eBay match payments, terms and conditions. And then it goes on to say here, uh, this week was a great deal. More information about eBay managed payments has emerged. This follows the, uh, from the, uh, follows the news from early in the week that saw eBay President CEO Devin Winnick announces the first payment on eBay has been made uh, has made uh, using the new intermediate intermediated system. Uh, we wrote about that. The first successful eBay managed payments transaction takes place. Um, it says we are now the <clears throat> now an eagle-eyed eBay merchant has found terms and conditions under which eBay managed payments will operate. You can read them in full here. Um, I'm not going to get into this here. Uh, I'll read the whole thing. Like I said, again, I don't want this to be too, too long because, like I said, I got another browser with, with other windows I want to go over really quick. So uh, you can check this out. 
It's on TameBay.com. And the next story is going to be from Tame Bay. Uh, I think, wait a minute, what is this here? Duplicates here? It might be duplicates. I'm sorry, folks. Let's see. Was it this one here? Oh, boy. I got three windows. Oh, it's even shortened up. This is great. I, <laughs> I don't know how that happened, but it did. Okay. Uh, the next ones are going to be all from ecommercebytes.com. So I'm not going to keep repa- repeating the, uh, the URL. Um, I will say this one time for the first start. It's uh, www.ecommercebytes.com. And it goes on to say this came out September 29th, uh, 2018. It says who to cre- uh, who all right, who to credit or blame for the eBay managed payments. Uh, and this is by Ina Steiner. She's the uh, founder and the owner of this uh, website. It says eBay is getting off to a rocky start with the managed payments. So how did it get its entang- get entangled uh, with becoming a payment intermediary in the first place? Why isn't it continuing to rely on PayPal, which is already integrated in the eBay marketplace? I agree 100% with Ina. Um, I really wish they would have left it just the way it was. I think it's going to be uh, a crazy thing because I'll be honest with you, uh, from looking at other websites and other blog posts, there are a lot of sales out there that don't like the idea of eBay managing managing their uh, you know their financials, so to speak, their uh, payments and sh- you know uh, they, how they were working it. Uh, I'm not crazy about it. Uh, so far, I called up earlier this morning and uh, I wanted to find out about that there. And um, the lady was trying to the teammate was trying to get me to um, talk to uh, somebody in the you know uh, that deals with the payments uh, division. And uh, they couldn't get a hold of anybody. So I said, you know what? I'll call back at a later time. <clears throat> so um, we'll see how that goes. If you want to read this story, folks, uh, you could check it out. The story you're looking for is uh, who, who to credit or blame for eBay managed payments. And you know the website. So let's bump right along here. Okay. It goes over here. Sellers find some prize in Etsy SEO guide. It says over here, Etsy recently purchased, uh, published a guide for sellers on optimizing listings for search. And it's helpful to see a seller follow up and analyze the company's advice. After all, search engine optimization, SEO, requires constant research with a healthy dose of skepticism, whether you're optimizing for a marketplace search or for Google. Um, You could check this out here. Um, Like I said, for some of those who are new here, uh, the reseller news, I just give you brief information and uh, it's just to enlighten you with certain things. Uh, the rest is up to you if you would like to follow through with it. Uh, that's why I give you the, uh, the URL. And then I tell you the story. I'll read a little about it. And the rest is up to you if you would like to uh, follow through and read it and read the rest of it. <coughs> okay. This one here is another one. This came out September 30th. It says, seller loses visibility after eBay mistakenly IDs dupe, list- uh, dupe listings. It says, Dear Ryan, on September 20th, I received an email from eBay that my selling privileges were restricted for seven days uh, for one of the duplicate listings, a decal and a self-adhesive sticker on the same subject. Uh, it says okay, over here, goes on to say, I call customer service, but no one knew the difference. The issue was resolved in my favor on Friday. I was assured that the restriction was removed, but would not be uh, would have not affected my other listings, nearly a thousand or, so, or selling. And then it goes on to say here by Friday evening, no listings were showing up in my store. And by Saturday morning, none of my listings were indexed on the site. That's crazy. Um, you can read the rest of this here, folks. Uh, again, you know the website. It's over here. And this story was posted, uh, came out on September 30th, which was yesterday. Yes. All right. Let's keep moving along here. Okay. So another one for September 30th. Halloween represents scary mouth of online. <clears throat> It goes on to say, break out the candy corn. Halloween is spending. Halloween spending is expected to reach nine billion on online and offline, according to the National Retail Federation (NRF). And when it comes to buying costumes and other uh, Halloween supplies, 24% will buy online. The NRF's annual survey conducted a prosper, um, by a Prosper Insights and Analytics indicate 2018 spending will be the second highest in in the survey 14-year history. The figure relatively the same of last year's previous record. For 1.9 billion dollars um you could check this out guys okay this is what they expect here planned halloween purchases candy will be 95 percent decoration 74 percent 68 percent costumes and 35 greeting cards okay let's see what else we got let's move right along 
eBay. Okay, eBay continues investment in visual shopping and image search. This story was posted 17, uh, September 29, 2018. eBay will continue working on improving its visual shopping feature and will expand to its additional platforms according to the post of eBay tech blog written by software engineer Ravi Petrua, Petrupra, whatever, I can't say his name. eBay launched its image search uh, last year and in July it announced the new drag and drop search functionality for the mobile search uh, for those who don't have the mobile app I really suggest you get it if you don't uh, I think it's pretty good the image search is okay uh, I can't you know I can't say too much about it. I don't want to expand too much on the topic it does work in some cases uh, sometimes when you do take a picture I'm in a thrift store I haven't been to one in quite some time because I ain't making sales unfortunately and uh, when I was in a thrift store a while 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 back um, I noticed like there were certain images like I, if I picked up an item or whatever I took a picture of it it would bring you to something totally different or you know it would bring you to that specific item that you're that you're doing research on uh, it's okay it's a little glitchy for me I mean personally I think it is but for those who do use it and uh, you know that had good experience if you'd like to share it with us on this uh, you know leave it in the comment below I'd like to hear what you have to say about it but it, it's okay I mean um, it's it's all right no no I'm not going to give it a 10 star rating, but it's it's okay. Let's put it to that way. But anyway, let's move right along. <clears throat> it says Amazon Amazon shipping is back up for sellers after outage. This was September 28, 2018. This came out. <clears throat> Excuse me, folks. Uh, sellers desperately are trying to get orders out the door on Friday and ran into problems with Amazon. Buy shipping went down for about two hours. Uh, sellers trying to print shipping labels and count the message. Buy shipping service are currently not available. Please try again later. Oh, great. Uh, a reader alerted us uh, to the problem. We have orders that um, are on time sensitive that have to ship and a service a service is totally down, she wrote. Um, listen, you know, we, you're going to have problems like this every now and then. I mean, geez, when I worked in the IT field, uh, we always had servers every now and then had glitches in them or whatever. They were getting updated or when they did a, a software, hardware, you know, integration or whatever. Uh, later on, you would have problems back, you know, getting it back up again to, uh, you know, get it where it's supposed to be. Uh, these things happen, you know. It's a computer. It's all computer driven. So uh, these things are going to happen. You just got to grin and bear with it, you know. And uh, hopefully your buyers will have the understanding of that as well. All right. Let's move right along here. This here I picked up here, folks. This is uh, from e-commerce, but it's classifieds. Uh, they have basic things on here, automated searches and stuff, where you could, you know, visit the website. You could contact the person. I just want to throw a little thing at this little segue. If you want to look for certain things, you got to sign up for it, though. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Uh, for auction sites, it says register for auction by its classifieds. You might want to check it out. You know, uh, I thought I'd throw it out there, though. But uh, you could you could see what it's all about. You know the site. Just check it out. All right, this is another thing, automated search. We'll get rid of that one here. eBay, uh, e-commerce EKG, this same thing with uh, e-commerce bytes, of course. They talk about certain issues that are going on, issues reported, and they'll tell you the status and so on and so forth. Uh, if you want to check it out, you might want to read this here. If you have any issues, report it right here. They got the issues right here. Got the report button here. Just report it, and they will put it on here on the e-commerce EKG. Okay, let's move right along, folks. I'm sorry if I'm talking fast. It's just that I just want to uh, try to get this here done. Oh, I think I went through that story already. Um, for user guides, for those who like to write guides, or you know, to help out informational guides, you can here. It says, "Welcome to the guides, which are written and submitted by readers." Here are some of the latest uh, published guides. Um, I, I was looking into this because I'm thinking of writing a guide myself, uh, basically on packaging tips and so on and so forth. Uh, the only thing is, though, there aren't everything. You know, even though they have these topics not all of them have uh, information on them as you can see nothing is found here uh, but if you go to another one that may be let's see for example um, let's read about this one here see they got one about this one okay so this one here person I guess wrote something about it uh, American Flyer trains basic operating information you can read about this one here and it goes on and on and on to say needless to say I am not going to read all this here but uh, it, the purpose of this here is to um, introduce you to guides and if you scroll down here to the bottom you can see the product categories okay 
Now, you know, they got antiques, cameras, photos, dolls. Now, if you click one of them on, let's just say cameras and photos, uh, it will probably tell you, oops, that page can't be found, right? So you got to like, you know, really do your own research and look into these things, you know, for yourself. Uh, some of these things do have information on them. Uh, let's just see, for example, this one here. Okay, nothing's found. So, you know, you got to play around with this. A good site, though. Otherwise, I mean, outside the guides, I'm not really concerned about that. This is one of my favorite sites as far as getting up-to-dated information. Uh, I like it, and I highly recommend it. If you're not a member of it or whatever, uh, you might want to sign into it. Uh, this one over here, <clears throat> it's uh, guides, frequent asked questions, and uh, when you, when you, if you're interested in, you know, checking them out, it'll give you what, what they want you to do here, you know. What, uh, you know, why should I host my guide in e-commerce bites? And that tells you there's many advantages of putting the guide into e-commerce bites. E-commerce bites will trap and excite over 5 million page views monthly. By putting your guide in uh, e-commerce bites, you are not only building a resource of tens of thousands of sellers uh, use, but you could also gain exposure to your listings and on all your selling venues. Uh, I'm thinking of doing this here. So I'm going to, me personally, I'm going to check into this here. Uh, if I can get my name out there and, you know, try to draw a business, I'll do whatever it takes for now. Anyway, I'm trying to hang in there with eBay. <clears throat> now we jump to a different browser. Uh, this was on Twitter. And for those who don't know about it, you got the eBay Partners Network. You could check into it there. I, I'm following, as you can see here. Uh, they give you information. And uh, you could check it out for yourself. Uh, okay, it says, why do you need to know about Apple IT I update? Uh, it's got a whole bunch of information there. You could you could sign up for them there on, or follow them on Twitter. Um, and I'll talk basically about different things, promoted tweets, and eBay News Net Partner Network. That's what I'm, uh, I'm involved with the eBay Partner Network, to be honest with you. That's another reason why I have an interest, and I want to share it with you guys. And then if you're also interested in the eBay News, they also have a, a, a following page, a following over here for eBay News. You can follow them on Twitter. As you can see, I'm following them as well. Okay. And um, there's some information over here, eBay Newsroom. Don't wait to shop exclusively. Look, uh, look for them at the eBay style sale, stylist sale through um, through 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time tomorrow for curated, uh, yeah, for curated prices from Hollywood's hottest styles and uh, proceeds benefiting the ACLU, whatever. Uh, and you could check that out, and uh, you can see over here when you hover over it. Let's see here or whatever. Um, I'm following it anyway, okay. But you could check it out for yourself. Uh, let's get bump out of here again. And I'm sorry if I'm talking fast. I just want to try to get this really quick, though, folks. Uh, I came across this one here. I got an email about this here about SmartShare from eBay. Um, you got to be in the uh, Chrome browser to add this to it. And uh, if you read a little about it over here, it gives you just basic little pages here. SmartShare from eBay. Um, earn while you browse from eBay. Right. Welcome. Let's get started. Uh, it's a little. It's a. It's a little uh, extension. You might want to check it out. One click personalized links. And then some of you share directly to Facebook or Pinterest. You might want to check it out. You could add it to your Chrome. I did. This has got to be done in Chrome. I believe, I don't know, well, I don't know if Ed, Microsoft Edge has it, but it's definitely Chrome. I know that. So you might want to check into this one here. You know what I was telling you back about the uh, eBay down detector? Well, I came a couple of other sites, a couple more that you may be interested in checking out. Uh, like I said, this channel is all about helping, inspiring, and sharing, and I do like to help, inspire, and share. This one right now <clears throat> is uh, downrightnow.net, okay? And you can check this one out. And uh, it's basically like Down Detector. Talks a little about the issues going on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here's one over here that was put up seven days ago, of course. I don't know if it's as popular as Down, Direct, uh, Down Detector, but this person over here says, I had three sales totaling over $300 this past week. None of my buyers can pay what's going on, Okay. And then they got some other ones over here. Can, uh, cannot buy items. Cannot even point <clears throat> on the items or read the details or put in a cart. You see, when I read stuff like this, folks, it makes me wonder too, because I'm saying to myself, you know, it's things like this. If you don't know what's going on, this is what I'm saying, folks. It's very important that you check into these things rather than sit there and just assuming it's a slow season. Uh, maybe it's that time of the year. You know, you might want to check into this stuff. You really do. And that's why I put these these, web, these websites out here to share, to let you guys know what's going on. Because sometimes, you know, look, I'll be honest with you. Before I even found out about Down Detect and stuff like that, I did my own research. And uh, I was sitting there saying, how come this is not selling? How come that's not selling? And, you know, until somebody enlightens you, you really don't know. 
you really don't know. And you know, you're sitting here, you, you, you're making all these summations in your mind. It's like, well, maybe it's this. Maybe the price is too high. Maybe I didn't do this. Maybe I didn't do that. And you know, it goes on and on. But you know, that's why I, I put these out there. That's why I give you these websites. You got to do your own due diligence, folks, and you got to check it out for yourself. Okay. I mean, if I get information, if I get a news brief, or if I get like a breaking news type of thing or something that's going on, uh, you'll be the first to know. But again, not to lead into a segue for it, but please subscribe, like, and share. And don't forget to hit that bell notification bell because even though you subscribe and you don't hit that notification bell, you're not going to know when I'm putting out new content. Okay. And it may, it may be something that may be helpful to you guys, and you're going to miss out on it. You know, but um, you got to check this one out too. Okay, uh, let over here. What is, it says over here? Uh, opening listed items. Yeah, I'm just reading this really quick here. What happened to the, uh, it? Says, uh, uh, what have you tried to fix at this time? Uh, that has already worked fine. I'm seriously concerned. Dodgy Chinese sites that even uh, that even have free shipping. Uh, you're gonna get a lot of stuff on here. You gotta read the old. You know, you gotta read these. What these comments is, people are saying. These are probably buyers and sellers, no doubt, because it's all deals with eBay. And there's a whole bunch of them over here. I'm not gonna read them all, but if you get the time, check them out, folks. Okay. And again, it's uh, is de it's called uh, the URL is uh, is down right now. One word. Dot net. Okay. There's also another one over here I came across. And this one here is outage report forward slash eBay. And this one reads the same, basically it's the same thing, talks about recent outages, okay? And then uh, here's from the United Kingdom, this is a little different than down detector, United Kingdom, mobile app not working. Chicago, New, uh, Chicago, United States, mobile app not working. And then it's got over here, let me see a little Cypress, website down. Uh, Mumbai, India, okay, that's okay. Frankfurt, United States, uh, website down. Mesa, United States, website down. This is 12 hours ago, I believe, here, okay? Then they give you a detailed map. If you click it on, it'll bring you most likely to the map of the United States, I would think. Uh, let's see. It's the first time I'm doing this here. Uh, let's see. Open. Well, you know what, folks? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna get into it here. It's got a little sad face in. Maybe it's not working properly. I don't know. Uh, this is a new site to me, but I just thought I'd share it with you guys. And then, you know, hey, we're not the only ones that have problems, folks. Look, Canadian outages. <laughs> CanadianOutages.com, and it has to do with eBay. And it goes on the same, basically the same thing. Well, they, it is a little different. Their problems were in March, of <clears throat> August 11th. March 5th and 7th, problems at eBay. You could uh, read the resolved issues. I'm not going to get into it, uh, but you could see same thing. Uh, people have been complaining, uh, have, you know, as of usual. That's what this, these uh, websites were all about, to voice your opinion and stuff like that. Plus, it also gives people, like I said, it gives them like a little heads up as to what's going on with eBay. Uh, I don't sell on eBay, so for me, this doesn't really concern me. But for those who do sell on eBay uh, and you want to check it out, the URL is Canadian Outages one word, dot com, forward slash status, forward slash eBay. And it's the HTTPS colon <clears throat> uh, forward slash, forward slash, okay? So you got that there. Um, let me bump over here. Here's the other one. Now this is the one for the U.S., of course, uh, down detector. And uh, the last one here, you could see the resolved issues with September 24th. Okay, I'm not going to open this up to read all this here. Most reported problems, as you can see, this goes up every day like the stock market, these numbers right here. The last time was 71, 69, now it's down to 51% on the website. The checkout is 25% and the login is 22%. Okay, and um, in order to uh, comment on here, they want you to log in. Okay, to join a discussion, they want you to log in. You can't just, you know, jump in there. Okay, because it tells you log in with any one of these. And then you could sign up or sign up with discuss uh, discuss I think yeah whatever um, and then it goes on to talk a little over here about eBay stock is taking lows today uh, this came out two hours ago to me eBay stock price represents the battle between communism and a free market uh, if it goes down that means communism is losing or crony capitalism <laughs> capitalism whatever call whatever you call it uh, is uh, when a douche in <laughs> is doing I don't you know I, you know sometimes people blame the CEOs and upper man executive management for what's going on. Listen, I'm not going to deny it. You know, if there are people out there that don't, uh, you know, stay with the, get with the times and they try to, you know, to, to rem remedy these issues, uh, you're going to have problems like this, you know. 
Uh, my whole saying is, my take on this is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it's working, leave it be. That's what I say. You can check this out, folks, uh, for those who are new, downdetector.com. Go to that website. You're going to scroll down, and you're going to look for the one that says eBay. You're going to click it on, and it'll bring you to this window. Moving right along. Where to find about and where to find where to find out about eBay uh, service outages? Um, it says eBay sometimes experiences technical difficulties. And uh, this came out. I know it's old, folks. I'm sorry, but old news could be good news. You can still get good information from it sometimes. Updated. It was December 31st, 2017. eBay, like any other technology, is great when it works. Usually, eBay is up and running, and buyers and sellers can conduct their businesses on the world's largest marketplace. Uh, without interruptions. However, there's a chance that eBay may be down or not functioning properly. There are a few ways to um, to learn what problem is uh, and, and what and when eBay will be back and up and running. Uh, this 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 website here it goes over. It says check on eBay.com. Of course, you could do that. Uh, you can navigate, like it says, to the link, uh, and you can listen. To, you know, read the announcements. Um, and you could check it out as well. Then they tell you over here you can call eBay customer service. They give you the phone number over here, which is still valid. Uh, I, I gave I've given that number out. Uh, or ask around eBay's networking groups, uh, eBay face group, Facebook groups. You can check there. Check out Down Detector. Okay, they tell you Down Detector. And I think that's about as far as that part goes. Okay. And then last but not least, this was uh, off the eBay community. Uh, this came in today, folks. This news here. <clears throat> you can see it right here. This is not being made up. This is not me. Uh, I am not that person. I'm right over here. Shop RJ for seeing for great deals. So I don't want you guys to think I'm writing this stuff. It says, sellers blackmailing you. Uh, again, 10-1, October 1st, 2018. I ordered an, uh, an item coming from China. The item never came in after, 30, after waiting 30 days, 30 plus days contacted the seller he tells me that I have to change my rating before I can get a refund and after I change the rating he would offer me ten dollars out of a of thirty dollars for a refund I tell him I want a full refund and I still haven't got what you what, what you know what did you do with it what do you think um, see this is the thing you know they got eBay is got to be more stringent on their international sellers okay now First off, I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to bump out of the screen here, folks, okay, because I don't want to keep looking over here. <laughs> keep you guys looking at um, I'll be honest with you, and I'm not saying this to be mean or whatever. Me personally, when I – if I buy very little on eBay. I'm a seller. Like I said, I do most of my selling on, uh, on eBay on as far as using that platform. And, you know, if I have to do research uh, or do comparison shopping with between Amazon, eBay, or whatever, you know, that's the might go to place the uh, eBay is anyway. Um, first off, I don't buy, I don't want to buy from China. No offense. It has nothing to do with them. Um, I don't particularly like to do business overseas or international things for simple reasons. I've been hearing a lot of stories such as this one here. Not this one, but the blackmailing. But items getting lost. There's always problems with uh, people complaining later on. And, you know, I'll tell you something. If you're going to buy from an overseas company, China, Japan, wherever the company is located, my suggestion is when you go to their site, click on their feedback. Now, you may say, okay, what's the purpose of that? Then why click on the feedback? Just read. and Not so much. You can well, check out the positives, no doubt about it. You check those out. But read the negatives. Read what the negatives are. Okay? Uh, in some cases, I'm not saying for all, but if their negatives are outpacing their positives or neutrals, you know, or I should say if negatives and, and neutrals, I should say, are outpacing the positives, it might be a little light bulb that goes off and said, you know, hey, you might want to think twice about buying from this person. I'm not saying anything. I'm not paying, making a derogative mark. At least it's not. I'm trying not to make it sound like that. But I'm just saying in certain cases, you know, reading that particular, um, that comment that was left on the eBay community, uh, it's kind of you know it's that's not right, you know. Um, I, I don't think that's fair the way people conduct business, especially overseas or international sellers. They shouldn't be doing stuff like that there, you know. You don't give you don't give a buyer an ultimatum, do it or else, you know. Or if you want your money, this is what you got to do. You got to give us a top rated, uh, a, you know, give us a five star rating. Yeah, it's not fair. It's not. I, let me tell you something. I would never expect that from anybody. If that that bought, but for me, I would never ever conduct that type of business. We're telling, uh, giving a buyer an ultimatum, okay? It's not fair. It's not right. Um, 
you know, I, I tell you the truth uh, in regards to uh, bias that you, you know, buy issues like that there or return issues. Uh, I did a thing on my uh, YouTube video the other day. It was a reseller news. Uh, I was talking about uh, a buyer that had purchased a printer from me, and the buyer. Uh, I don't know if they understood the description because I do write English and it was right in plain topic there. It said the uh, item is being, the printer is being, you know, printer is being sold for parts not working. Um, and it was in the tagline, you know, description line and also within the description body. And I put in there uh, for being, you know, for parts not working, uh, all sales are final. The, just to share this very quick, the uh, buyer opens up a return case you know, with the with eBay's auto return, I didn't have a chance to. I was talking to, to eBay teammate earlier about that there because I wanted to get some uh, information, and um, I told him I said, you know, with eBay's return policy, that's terrible. I said I didn't even get a chance to interact with the buyer to ask the buyer to tell the buyer, listen, you know, you could keep the item. Would you want? To, well, first I'd say, would you want to work a partial refund out? You know, and the person said, yeah, give me a partial refund. I would let the person keep it. You know, all right, because they already paid the shipping. It's already in their premises. So, I mean, for me, uh, if I had to, you know, let, the item only sold for nineteen ninety nine. So, I mean, me, I would just say, here, it's, we'll, we'll split it. I'll give you 10 bucks for it, you know. Give you, I'll give you a refund, you $10, you know, and let the buyer keep it. Um, the buyer purchased the thing. I think it was sent out the 26 or 27, whatever it was. They got it that one day, and the next day, they opened the case. I look in there, I got a message, I got a return case open. I was like, oh, geez. I go, and I look it up. I was like, what is it? It's the printer. Um, so anyway, uh, I said, okay, well, what can I do? I'm at liberty. I mean, eBay's doing that. They got the auto return policy. The buyer has the right to send it back. But hey, I, did, I did contact eBay in regards to that as well. And I said, look, what happens in the case of that? You know, I asked him, I said, isn't that going to affect my seller performance? Well... Yeah, it will a little, but not much. You know, I said, what do you mean little? But what are you talking about? I said, wait a minute. I said, let's get this straight. I said, I sold that item. It's not as item is not as described. I said that, and he put defective. <laughs> I said, the item is being sold for parts not working. I said, please go into my listing, check it out, and you'll see for yourself. Okay, what's the item number? Give it the item number. It goes in there, looks it up. Oh, you are right. You are right. You do have it there on both. You got it on the, the description line, you know, and you also got it within the description body that it says it right there for being for parts not you know for parts not working, and all sales are final. To be honest with you, folks, it don't matter if all sales are final or you accept no returns because you know what? With eBay's policy, the way I see it, they're gonna they're gonna return it anyway. <laughs> it's plain and simple. However. It might be a little gray area there. The person did say, now the person, this, this he or she who's returning it, uh, it just, I, I messaged them, okay? And in the message, it went something like this. I'm not gonna read it verbatim. I have it somewhere. I know I printed a copy out for myself. In the message, I said to the buyer, I said, look, I said, you know, I go, you're sending this back as a defective item. I said, it's, this item was being sold for parts not working and I said in there I stated in there in the description it's in the body itself stating all sales are final and I said you still persisted persisted to send it back I said that's all fine I said but would you comp would you be willing to compensate or pay for the return shipping I said because it's not fair to me you know if you you willfully know something is wrong Okay, and, you, and the person's putting all sales a final whatever, and the item is being for, sold for parts not working. That should be a light bulb that goes off in your head and say, "Hey, wait a minute, this thing is he's selling it for parts. What what part don't what part don't you understand, right?" And um, I don't have a problem with taking returns back, folks. I really don't. So I don't want you to think like, "Oh, geez, if I buy from this guy's giving me a hard time." No, I'm not. I am not going to give you a, a hard time. Look, I tell people this in some of my other videos, not all the time, but in some of my videos. Before you make any purchases from me, read my feedbacks. That's why I told the lady, I said, you know, because the guy wrote, and I think, item is not as described or something like that. I said, do, do me a favor. I, when I had the teammate on the phone, I said, do me a favor. You're on my account, right? Yes, I am. Could you do me a favor? Could you go down and look at my feedbacks? Item as described. Item as described. Not all. I'm not saying all, whatever, 1,100, whatever it is, 96, 97. I'm not saying everybody wrote that, but it's 100% feedback. 
And if you look in there, I can't highlight all of them, but a lot of them are saying item as described. Item as described. Okay? So, or, or you know, it, it described as, you know, as, you know whatever. They just said it was descri as described, period. And um, she goes, yeah, I see that. You got a lot of good feedback on it. I said, well, I go, that's where I do business. I'm not out to, I, I told her, I said, I'm not out to shaft anybody to, to, you know, willfully send something out that's not right. Look, if I'm doing a video, I usually do uh, sneak peek videos, demo videos, and intro videos. Now, when I'm doing an intro video or a demo video on a printer, let's say it was that particular one, I, I go out of my way to set my camera up, my digital video camera, on a display table or on my desk in some cases, and I will go over verbatim. What is wrong with that printer? Okay, does it have scratches on it? Is it broken, dings, dings, or whatever? And I go over it in detail. And for people, the stuff I sell doesn't come in original packaging, and there is no user guide or manuals, whatever, or any software included. And I will go into the website and, you know, like when I do my video, and I will tell you where you could obtain uh, the software to upload for that printer, that particular printer. Very simple. It's very simple. If it's an HP, especially HPs or well, Brothers printers, you just go to the site, type in a printer. I have two HPs. I have a laser printer, a PF2055DN. I also have an HP all-in-one 7520 uh, printer. And all you got to do is type that in a Google search, type in user manual or software. You go there, you get the thing there, you know, you'll see the software, it'll show you a little icon, a little picture of your particular printer, and I'll have the software, and you can print out the guide, the user guide. I don't print the user guides out because some of them, for like one of the HPs I sold had, I think, 100 and something pages. I am not going to print out 170 pages, whatever it was, on my laser printer, use up all my paper and my toner. You know, I mean, I want to make a sale, but like I tell people, when you do go to these sites, when I direct you to these sites, you could just pick out the highlighted ones you need, okay? So let's say it's an all-in-one printer. Uh, you want to know how to configure the Wi-Fi. You would go down there. You open up the user guide on the Internet, and then you would look for that particular topic, and you print out a page or two. I show, I show the people how to print out pages, not all the whole 70 pages, whatever it may be. And you pick out that particular item, you know, that, uh, that uh, page that you're looking for, and then you have the content. You get the hard copy right there. You can read. Okay, you don't have to print out the whole thing. I don't have any manuals for these printers. These are all pre-owned. I got them from the thrift store. And because I am a frugal entrepreneur, <laughs> no. But seriously, no. I did the printers I have right here that I work that I use uh, for everyday use. They're all from the thrift store, but they're like brand new, and I got them for great prices. Okay, so uh, but I'm, what I'm trying to say is I go over that in detail, and when I'm doing when I'm doing my live demo videos with it, I will tell you there's a scratch, there's a chip. There's a little crack in it, whatever it may be. No, I don't buy prints like that anyway. But if it was, I get into, I scrutinize that thing. I make sure I'm giving you, I'm, I'm telling you everything humanly possible about that item. And if I do forget, and I said this in my other videos, if I do forget to put something, well, I, I didn't bring it out in the video, I will mention it in the description. So what I don't put in the video, it'll be in the description. Plain and simple. You know, but, um, you know, folks, I, I tell you the truth, I don't, and I'm not saying it's to me, but I had a couple of occasions where I had, I think, either two or three items returned due to the buyer not reading the, the, uh, the, the description. Now, you might say that. I find that hard to believe. You're going to tell me, all three of those people, that if I'm lying, I'm dying. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. I've had it where I had, I, I listed in there. Now, my descriptions are not that big. Okay, I might have a lot of stuff. If you look at my descriptions in, in general, um, they are—they're not that lengthy. I mean, I've seen—I've seen descriptions from other uh, eBay sellers. I mean, they—they they got a lot of wording in there. Mine is pretty cryptic, very cut and dry. Comes right to the point, and uh, you could—you can't tell me if you look at my listings, you can't tell me there's no reason, there's no reason a buyer couldn't have read it. The, the description line might be yay big. Okay. Now, you know, when you go buy a car, uh, don't you want? Don't you read the sticker to see what, what you're getting in that car? Does it come with air conditioning, aim in it, fam? Does it have Wi-Fi capability? Does it have the GPS, whatever built in? And all that, other, all those bells and whistles. Don't you read that? Okay. They don't put a booklet out there, but they put on the sticker, the window sticker. They tell you the features, what the car is, get, what it's all about, the gas mileage, so on and so forth. I mean, cylinders there is, right? 
Now, come on. I mean, I have I, on my descriptions. It's very it's very cryptic. It's right to the point. Okay. Although I have to honestly say, listen to eBay Radio. No offense to Griff and Lee, uh, but I have to say, back in the day when I used to listen to them. Uh, I haven't been listening to them since they went off. I know there's a podcast, but I don't really get into it because uh, to me, basically, folks, with eBay Radio, kind of like curtailing off to the side, uh, it's basically the same information. They may come out with new different things, you know, different topics about the new changes that are going on and new programs rolling out. But anyway, long story short, um, yeah, I remember there was, a, there was a topic one time. I was listening to eBay Radio, and he, he said, I believe it was Griff, uh, he was talking about being too wordy in description. And the thing is, and I remember him saying that, don't write so much because not everybody's going to read it. So that's that old saying, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Now, if you don't write it and you're, you're not that descriptive enough in, in your description, right, you know, you don't describe it to the T, what's going to happen? The buyer's going to get it. They're going to say, oh, the buyer, the seller didn't mention this or the seller didn't mention that. And next thing you know, you're getting a returned item. And that, that's a mark on you, okay? Because now, to be honest with you, if I did that, if I if I left something out purposely, well, maybe. Depends, unless I had a mind, uh, was, my mind was in another world where I was, wasn't thinking properly, and I forgot about it innocently. And it comes back, I deserve to get I deserve to get the item as not as described. Plain and simple, you know? Plain and simple. That I deserve to get it, the item to come back, you know? My take is... Be, you know, describe it to the best of your ability to the T, but be cryptic. I mean, you know, get to the point, but put it in there, though. Make sure you come out, you know, like I said, the devil's in the details, so to speak. Make sure you got that, that description, that, whatever it is that's wrong with that item. Scratches, faded, things, dense, whatever it may be. If it's missing a part, be upfront and honest with the seller, I mean the buyer. Because it's going to reflect on you, and you know what it's going to reflect? And when they get your feedback. And that's why I try to tell people, before you buy from me, look at my feedbacks first. Don't even buy from me. Just, just if, you, all right, if you're interested in the item, fine. All right, I don't mean, not to, I, I'm not saying it to be facetious. Like, oh, don't buy from me. I don't like, it's like begging. No, please don't buy from me. No, I do want you to buy from me. But before you make that attempt to buy from me, just read my feedbacks. That's all I ask. Read the feedbacks. See what other people are saying about it. If you feel comfortable, you know my policies for those who save me as a seller, as a, you know, an eBay seller. You know who I am. If you're, I have repeat buyers. They know what I'm all about. Okay, and I am willing to do anything and everything possible for you, the buyer. Okay, you are my number one priority. Okay, and I will do whatever it takes to keep you happy. Okay. No matter what it may take, but to be so, so you're happy. Now you might say, well, you don't sound like that with the, with this guy who bought the printer. The only reason why I'm getting into that part, you know, is I'm not too happy about that, is because I'm right. I'm right in that respect. The buyer seeing it up there, <laughs> it's being sold for parts, and you're getting and saying it's defective, doesn't work. Why am I at blame? Why are you blaming me? I put it in there. I said it's not working for parts not working. That's why I put it there. So in that respect, I am going to fend for myself and I am going to defend myself as well in that there. And I and I, I will uh, take it up with eBay and, and see what the story is. Now eBay says we can't do anything until you get the item back. Now that was sep September 28th. He opened the case. There's no tracking number, so I can't follow as to when it goes. To, it's going to go to my P.O. box, no doubt. Um, it's going to my local post office and when it goes there then i gotta pick it up i gotta see if it's been damaged or whatever but it's broke it's for plots not working anyway but you know if they let's say the case is cracked or whatever you didn't package it right and everything got broken then i would call ebay up and say listen this is what happened but the person did say this if they don't send it back by october 5th if the iron's not received by october 5th uh, it will be escalated to uh, i don't know some other department and they will close the case out now in a case like that uh is the buyer out of luck? Am I out of luck? Am I still at liberty to pay the person? I don't know. Because here's, here's, the, here's the gray area. I offer 30-day free returns. So if he got it within two weeks, we could, let's say it'll be two weeks now, he's still within the guidelines. So I don't know how that's going to work. The only, thing, the only thing I will say, because, because it's the, I, felt, I feel it's the buyer's fault, 
he should at least compensate for the return shipping. I shouldn't have to take a loss on that. So I don't know where it's going to go. Most likely, uh, if I have to honestly say, I don't think the buyer is going to, uh, you know, comply with my request as far as, um, you know, with the compensating with the return shipping price, as you know, the cost of shipping. I don't think he's going to, I don't think he or she is going to uh, compensate me with that. I think I'm going to be taking a loss on it. But if that is the case, I'm going to call up eBay. I'm going to voice my opinion and my issue. Like I said in my video videos, uh, when you have a situation with eBay, you call them up, ask them, you know, and express your, your concerns and issues with them. And at the end of the call, you don't have to if you don't want. It's totally up to you if you want to keep repeating yourself. I always tell people, give me a case number. Because this way, I know they documented it. But it's always good to have a case number, so you don't have to keep constantly repeating yourself over and over again. If you have to get, if it gets escalated to different departments, you know, I mean, to have a case number, hopefully it's all documented. All I could do is patch over to the right person and leave it at that, you know. But uh, for the most part, yeah, that's it. And then today, uh, just just finishing up with this segment, I printed out 11 pages here. These are 11 pages, a total of 188. There was a total of 226 on here. Some stuff I had to take out. Um, I donated a lot to my church. And this is what's left over, 188 items that are right now are off eBay. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be, uh, what do you call it there, skimming through these and get rid of some more stuff. Nothing has been selling. Uh, somebody even checked my thing at my site. They said, I know, I see what you're saying. You didn't sell much in September. Um, I don't know how much money, how much am I going to keep of this stuff or how much is it going to be. I don't know if I'm going to relist a lot of it or I'm going to take a lot of it and donate that to my church. Uh, will it run me out of inventory? Well, yeah, I, don't, I won't have that much inventory left after I get rid of this year. Um, I'm not going to go out and source because for, for a simple reason is for me to go out and source and buy more stuff and nothing is selling, why bother? Why bother? I got bills coming up at the end of the month. This is the new month. I'm already getting uh, I'm already getting response from my bank saying you're gonna have a bill due in, in 15 more days. You're gonna have a bill due in 20 days. You know because I have bills that come in that get paid at different times of the month, the 15th, the 28th, the 27th, 26th, and I get these email reminders telling me when the bill is gonna be up. They, I like that day because it keeps me abreast of what's going on. And uh, when I'm not making money off of eBay, which I'm not, I have to take money out of my reserve account to pay those bills. So that's one. That's another thing that's got me a little frustrated and a little flustered here. Um, I hadn't opened a, a starter store, which thank God is only $4.95 uh, a month. I did that cheap starter store thing, which gives you 100 free listings a month. Uh, it's got some little perks to it. Not bad, considering I think it's, for me, uh, it worked. It would work out a lot cheaper than the other way because when I had the good to cancel, every time all those 376 or 326 items ended, because nobody's buying, I ended up tagging on another bill. And then, then again, you keep doing that there, and it keeps tagging on. The next thing you know, I was running bills up. The payments were coming up as to almost to um, where, I could, where I could lease a small car payment. That's how much it was. That's how much they would charge me every month on eBay. So there's something definitely going on with that, folks. I don't care what anybody says. They could sit there and say, well, you know, maybe the stuff you're selling is not really, you know, top-end stuff that people are looking for. They're not really interested in that stuff you buy, you know, that you got up. It's slow for everybody. You know, you're going to hear that there. The blame game, I call it. Everybody sits there pointing, well, you know, it's the season. It's the holiday. Uh, it's that time of the year. Uh, people on vacation. Uh, tax time. You know, because I had that one time. I, I called up uh, eBay. and said, what's going on? You guys experience what? Well, you know, uh, tax time just passed and stuff like that. People might not have the money right now to go buy an eBay. There's a teammate telling me that they're from eBay. Well, they, they must coax them in. You tell them, now, after tax time, tell them that, you know, because of tax time, people might not have money to buy stuff. So, you know, you got to, you know, let them know. You know, so they got to they preempt you, you know. Oh, well, this is, what, this, is what, this is what you tell them. You know, tax time has come. People don't have money to spend on eBay or near the holidays, you know. Uh, Black Friday, you know, Cyber Monday, what all these things there. I don't know, they're prepping, are they prepping? I think something now it's going to come up. Was it November, Black Friday? Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm losing track of the days half of the times. I don't know what's coming up and coming and going. But um, they always have it. There's always excuses. It's always excuses. You know what the bottom line is, folks, what I, how I look at it? Outside of all the stuff that eBay's doing, to be honest with you, uh, as far as I'm concerned, there's too much competition out there. And it could be, it could be, I have to say this here, it could be world events that's taken place too. 
I mean, let's be honest, but not another. Now, the, the thing that happened in North Carolina, we can say, well, what does that have to do with it? How about the other states, surrounding states? Where, I know, but you got to understand something. And even myself, some people we get caught up. Now, I don't discuss religion or politics on, on, my, on this channel. I never will, okay? Because it's a very touchy subject. They're both touchy subjects. And all you could do is it could become an inflammatory thing. People will sit there. If you start voicing your opinion or start throwing stuff out there, people will tend to voice their opinion. And the next thing you know, instead of making friends, you're making enemies. <laughs> so that's why I don't talk about that. Um, but I do believe, I do believe, and even myself, sometimes we get caught up in different things. Now, I'm not going to say I'm oblivious to what's going on. I do follow politics, okay? And I do follow, you know, I am, I, I am on the religious side of life, so I try to, you know, keep a, what do you going to say? I try to, try to, I try to keep it like, you know, a happy medium between the both of them, all right? So, uh, and, and I do believe the economy does affect things. People are, you know, looking at what's going on with, what, what's going on with the politicians, Okay, uh, a lot of people are afraid that if there's a change in, in parties, uh, you know, taxes are going to go up, a lot of things are going to be rolled back, and so on and so forth. And therefore, people are thinking they're probably about their jobs. They, if they, especially if you get people that don't feel comfortable, I know people are saying, well, you know, yeah, well, all this about job creation is this, that, and the other economy is doing the stock market, and all yeah, but it, it does take a toll on you folks. That's why you ever hear the word consumer confidence. If you feel good about something, then you don't mind a person said, well, you know, I know I, 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 I could, I'm thinking about getting an updated uh, laptop. Or maybe I think I will buy that iPad I was always looking for. Because you feel good about yourself. You feel confident. That's why you say consumer confidence, you know. Inflation, right? Inflation, what is that? If I'm not mistaken, that's when people, they tend to hold on to their money. They don't like to spend as much. <clears throat> I could be wrong with that. I'm not an economist, by the way. Well, I'm not a financial statistician that sits here and does statistical abstracts on things. But I will say this, okay, for my own benefit, for my own things, how I look at life is I think a lot of things that go on within this world, world events, uh, I do think it does take a toll on, on, uh, on sales. You know, if people don't feel good about themselves or feel good about the, the way the economy's going, about their jobs, plain and simple, they're not going to buy, folks. I don't care how cheap an item is. Although, you know, I was looking one thing, I want to say this, I found that, you know, um, sometimes when I do my research, you know, I, I, look at, I look at it this way. I might not be making any sales, but, you know, I, I was looking at a company um, that the person, for, I think, sells in Japan or from Japan or something like that. I don't know, something along that line there. But they sell international and U.S. And uh, I'm looking at this person's sales, okay? Um, He's got, this is sold listings, 1,596 items that were sold. And I'm looking, it's like, what? And I'm scrolling down on the sold listings. All right, granted, the person deals with vintage stuff and old antiquated things like uh, old World War II fighter pilot jackets, whatever, uh, selling for $457, shipping is $70, and all this type of different things. And I'm looking at, and I see how many this person was sold. I mean, they, they sold listings, you know, 1,596, 1,596 listings that sold. And I'm saying to myself, if you do the math on what this guy sold, he made, this guy is making some buku cash. I mean, <laughs> talk about getting a, it's like a, that's like a stick in the eye. I'm looking and saying, if I was make, if I had that many sales sold listings at the prices this guy's selling these items at, one jacket was 457 bucks, and they, he charged $70 to ship it. And he had a whole bunch of things. So you do the math, okay? I mean, 1,596 items sold at all different prices. And I'm not talking, some of them might have sold for like one thing he had there for a bidding was for a dollar. He got a dollar bid on it. I forget what it was, a little patch or knickknack, whatever it was. But I'm looking at all the other things. This guy's doing some good cash here. He's making good cash. And I said to myself, I had something similar to what this guy was selling. I said, uh, I couldn't even get rid of it. But this person did. Now, I was reading it in one of the uh, things there that, uh, one of the uh, posts there, the eBay community, that uh, eBay, this is what they said, not me, someone wrote in a community thing, uh, community chat board, that eBay don't care about the small time sellers. You know, if that is true, I can be wrong. But if that is true, where they take their high-powered sellers up there 
and they put them on top of the echelon, so to speak, where they're getting all the business and they're doing great business with foreign countries like China or whatever or Japan or whatever, uh, and they're making those phenomenal sales or they're catering to that particular market, that is wrong. That is wrong on all platforms. I'm sorry. Um, I don't agree with that. You know, my, my money is just as good as anybody else. You know, and if I'm selling on if I'm selling on your platform, I expect the same respect and, and, and the due diligence as far as like getting my item up there, just like a guy that's a power cell that's making thousands and thousands a month. Granted, I don't make you a lot of money, eBay. And eBay knows that. You know, they do they do they do statistics on you. They they keep track of everything on you know, what's what's going on, what's coming, what's going out. Okay, so they know I don't. I'm not. And you know what? Here's the thing. By them doing that to me, how am I supposed to create sales? How can I help you out if you can't help me? Right? I mean, think about it. October, three sales minus the printer, two. Two sales. Hopefully, where the people going to keep the items? That's it. And I always tell people, folks. And I'll say it one last time. Well, not last time, <clears throat> but in this video, for those who are new, if you cannot make, okay, and this is on a low, and I always say the same thing, I keep expressing the same thing. If you cannot make at least, at least $100 a day, and that's low, if you can't make at least $100 a day, you're in bad shape. And if you're not selling stuff, for two or three weeks or a month, like in my case here, September was a wash. There was nothing there, basically. Those those things I sold, those two little items I sold, couldn't even take you out for a dinner. You couldn't even take your family out for a dinner, okay? I'm being up front honest. Look, I don't sugarcoat anything on this channel, folks. I tell it like it is. Like I said in my other videos, if people are looking for a different or a different uplifting in videos, like, oh, this guy's, you know, he's too pessimistic. I'm not pessimistic. I'm more of an optimist. But if you're looking for that type of channel where you want to go to a channel and hear, hey, this day I'm doing great. Today I sold 500 items. I made uh, $200,000 this year. You're not going to hear from me. Then this ain't the channel for you then. Because I don't, I'm a straight shooter. I tell it like it is. I don't sugarcoat anything. And I don't have, a, I don't have a, a plan to sell you. I don't have a book to sell you. And I don't have a dream to sell you. Okay? That's what I'm saying. I tell it like it is. I don't, I'm not going to lie to you. Because first off, if I was to sit here in front of my webcam and I'm telling you that I've made phenomenal sales and I'm telling you I'm doing great you're thinking maybe you might be thinking well that guy I want to listen to him because he's great he tells he, he he's doing great he's he's the one I want to be around no I tell it like it is I'm not gonna lie to you my new subscribers or to anybody that hits this channel who's following me for the first time I tell it like it is I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything folks okay now some of you may, after you watch my videos or watch this particular video, you might say, I'm, a, I'm not going to subscribe to this guy. He's not, he's not for me. This, this person's not for me. I, he's too negative. He talks negative. I, I'm not going to subscribe to him. And that's fine. You're, 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 you're at liberty to do whatever you like. I can't, I can't force you to watch my channel, my videos. Okay. The reason why I got into the whole YouTube thing here is because I felt that um, I want to help people out. And I wanna, I've, been, I've been watching enough videos to see what people, other people are talking about. And to be honest with you, I see a lot of positive things coming out of people's mouths, which is good. I mean, nobody wants to be around a blase person and say, oh, God, that guy is so depressing. I, I can't watch him. I, yeah, I, look, if I was super depressed like that, <clears throat> I myself would want to watch a person like that. But isn't it better? Isn't it nice to hear the truth from somebody? Don't you want to hear the truth, the lowdown? Don't you want to hear a person that's not sugarcoating anything, telling it like it is, rather than telling you uh, a dream? You know? I mean, I don't know about you. That's how I feel. If I had a choice to watch somebody that's positive, that's always putting positive stuff, hey, how you doing? I'm doing this. I'm doing that there. As a person like myself coming up and saying, I'm a straight shooter. I tell it like it is. I don't sugarcoat. I'd rather watch the guy like me for the simple reason is he's being upfront and honest. Why should I lie to you? What is that going to do for me? Because you want to know what, folks? When I click that button off my mic and I shut that, that, that webcam off, that's it. I'm back to reality again. And the reality is, is I just told everybody I was doing great when I'm doing that, when I'm not doing so great, you know? It, it, that's what it's all about. It's, it's exactly what it's all about. 
And I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to do that to my, my subscribers. I hope I don't lose any subscribers after this video. I hope not. But I, I want you one thing before if you do, if you ever do decide that you don't want to be part of my, you know, my, my group, or whatever, the YouTube channel. Uh, I do hope if you do decide to, if you, you know, that you want to go that route where you do want to unsubscribe, just bear in mind what you're unsubscribing to. Okay, you're, you're unsubscribing to a person that's upfront and honest, and I tell it like it is. So, you know, if you want to go elsewhere and you want to follow somebody else that um, tells you a different story, that's fine. You're more than welcome to do that. But you may be missing out on good stuff, folks. I'll be honest with you. Um, and the only reason why I'm bringing this out is because I've been noticing that, you know, I have people subscribing and then they're unsubscribing. And that's okay. You know, maybe not everybody likes the content I put out. But uh, I can't please everybody. You're going to say you can please so many people sometimes. You can't please them all the time. You know, uh, what's that other saying? Laugh and the world laughs with you. Cry, you cry alone, right? Uh, I try to put out good stuff for you guys. I do it with my heart. I could be doing other things right now. It's going on. It's right now. I'm in New York. I can't believe how fast the time went. It's 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 20 after 4 p.m. over here. I'm on the east coast of New York. I never seen a day go by so fast. It's unbelievable. I remember I woke up this morning at seven o'clock this morning. Now here it is. It's <laughs> it's going for going on for for it's 20 after 4 already. So you know, folks, you do what you want. Uh, for those who do hang in there with me and subscribe to my channel, I totally appreciate it I, i'm so grateful that you guys out there you know i was just looking at my um youtube subscriber list i was looking at all the people on there and i just want to say this to all the people out there it's um i never i never thought i'd get this far with this channel as far as that and you know people say guys kidding he's got a little over 300 people and he's sitting there acting like he's got over 300 million or whatever <laughs> or three million people um it makes me really happy it really does um you know, I real I want to connect with you people. I don't know you as per I don't know you, as, you know, on a personal level, but uh, if you get to know me, you will know I'm a really good guy. Um, for the repeat buyers that do follow me on on uh, eBay and on this channel, um, well, repeat buyers, but they do the, re the repeat buyers. I'm sure watch my videos because it's sometimes I put my demo videos in there. Uh, they know what type of character I am, and uh, it, you know, if you ever do want to buy anything from me, uh, just to just to throw it out there. Uh, I am an honest seller, and um, I do stand by my word. And uh, you know, if you did buy anything from me, and before you do buy anything, like I said earlier, uh, please check my feedbacks first. Uh, that's all I ask. I'm not telling you to read all 1196 of them, but uh, you could check them out for yourself and see what the people say. And if you feel comfortable with what they say, and uh, you you know you, you feel that's that's a, you know you want to take a chance, please by all means do. You know. I, I'm always willing to work with my buyers. Uh, they mean a lot to me. You guys, like I said again earlier, you're number one. Okay, you're number one in my books, and I will do everything in my power to make you guys happy. You know, uh, you'll find if you read my if you read my feedbacks, you'll find a lot. Of, there's a lot of people out there had wrote nice things about me and my feedbacks, and uh, that makes me happy inside because it lets me know I'm doing the right thing by by my customers, by my buyers. Listen, buyers are also sellers. So, you know, they play it on both sides of the fence. I'm basically a seller. I don't buy. I basically am a seller. The only things, like I said in my other videos, the only things I buy is ink cartridges for my all-in-one printer, and I buy toner cartridges for my, my laser printer. I don't really buy anything. If you look at my buying history, you'll see every few little things I bought, and that's out of necessity. Not to buy, to say, oh, I want to have it, you know. So um, I do encourage you to um, really, if you, if you like my, the content I put out, um, it's this this video, this YouTube channel. I call it the His Initiative Program. I call it. Um, it's to help, inspire, and share, and it's also a clean content channel, folks. If you want a channel where you're going to hear a person, you know, that's not going to discuss religion or politics or use profanity or talk any crazy talk, then this is the channel you want to subscribe to. That's all I can tell you. If you want good, clean content from a good guy. I don't know you, but I would like if I was if you were to meet me in person or know me, you would say you're a down to earth guy, Rich. I like you. You're a nice person. Uh, I've always heard that from other people who met me the first time. You're a nice guy, easy going guy, and I go out of my way to help people out, and that's why I made this video. That's why I did this channel, folks. That's why I made this. I, that's well, not I'm making the videos, but that's why I, I created this channel. It's to help inspire and share. It's to help people out. You know, and I share my own personal expense uh, things too. And not only that, 
just just to throw this in there, um, the reseller news, folks, is to help people out. It's basically to you know give you guys a heads up as to what's going on in the e-commerce world. Now, I don't have to sit here and do this because this is gonna this video is gonna take hours to upload, to edit and upload. I know it. By by the time I finish this, see, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I can tell you this: it probably won't be up. This video probably won't be up to probably. And uh, later in the evening, maybe seven or eight o'clock, it might take. It takes a couple hours just to upload it to co no convert it, because after I do the uh, after I create the video, I got to edit it. The editing takes a long time. Then when I'm exporting it, it's got to convert it into that language for uh, YouTube. That takes hours just to upload it. And then when you go to eBay, I mean when you go to YouTube to upload it to YouTube, that takes probably maybe I don't know probably within a half hour or so. It takes time depending on how long the video is. But I do it for you guys. And a lot of people are saying, why do you waste your time? You know, why do you waste your time creating videos? Who's going to really watch your videos? Who's going to watch this? I don't know. Why do people like to watch a lot of videos on uh, YouTube? I watch quite a bit of YouTube videos myself. But I'm watching it to research. I watch it to learn. I like documentaries on eBay. I mean, about, uh, not about eBay. But I like documentaries on YouTube. I watch a lot of history things. You know, I want to learn. I like learning. I watch very little television. Um, to be honest with you, uh, I, I'm lucky I watch an hour or maybe two hours of TV a week, if that. I, and sometimes there's, there's a week that goes by, I don't even turn the TV on. I spend 99.9% .9 of my time on a computer doing research, working on my own stuff, trying to improvise, trying to make things, trying to, I'm thinking of conjuring up ideas to help make sales and so on. But that's what I'm all about. That's what this YouTube channel is all about, folks. That's what the reseller news is all about. That's what the, uh, my, when I do my demo videos, intro videos, and sneak peek videos, that's what it's all about. They're all about to help you guys out. And I do other stuff too, do it yourself and how to videos. I haven't done them in a while, but I do. I do, if you look at my videos, I'm not saying look at all of them, but if you look at the videos I create, um, some of them are, you know, a deal, deal back you know, on how packaging, how do I package my fragile items, how to make how I make custom boxes and stuff like that. So I do have some videos out there. It's just a matter of searching for them, you know. It's quite a bit. Uh, I'm not like some of these people have thousands of videos up there, but it's getting there, you know. My goal is, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it, but my goal is before the new year comes, I would like to at least have a thousand videos and people say, what's so great? So what is that going to do? What is that going to do if you have a thousand videos? It's just something I want to do, you know. Uh, I, I would like to have a thousand videos, that's all. It's a goal, you know. Is it going to make me anything uh, special or anything? No, it's going to make me anything special. It's just something I want to, I want to do, you know. I want to commit to. Um, it's a dream and a goal I have. I love doing YouTube, and I do love e-commerce business. I do. And as much as people may say I sound like a pessimist when it comes to eBay, uh, I'm not a pessimist. I'm more of an optimist. I'm hanging in there just like everybody else. For now, for now, I'm hanging in there. But there may be a time where, if eBay don't pick up soon enough. There may be a time when people, well, myself, I can't speak for other people, but myself, you know, as much as I say I enjoy doing this, I love what I do, I'll always do videos. But as far as like e commerce, if I can't make money, then I have to go back to a nine to five job. What am I going to do? I got to provide, I got to put food on the table, I got bills to pay. You know, there's only so much money I have left in reserve. I mean, you can't sit there and live on it forever. You know, when I got laid off back in 2016, of, you know, June of 2016, that was it, my friends. All the benefits stopped. 401k, your pension, paid holidays, paid sick days, it's all gone, all gone, plain and simple. And when you're doing this here for a full-time business and you're not making a full-time income, it's pretty scary out there. And that's why I always tell people, don't quit your day job, whatever you do. And the other thing I also say too, not to be mean, just be, just be cautious about all these 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 uh these things that come up where people saying you can make this much money that much money you know be careful proceed with caution and everything you do and anything you do and i will leave you with this like my father once said god rest his soul believe what you see and only half of what you hear okay because let me tell you something as i said as my father used to say easy money money is easy to spend and hard to make and i have another one on top of that Debt is easy to get into and hard to get out of. And the reason why I could say this is because I've been there. I know what it's all about. 
and it's not a pretty road to race. It's not a pretty road picture, to be honest with you. It's a road you don't want to travel down. When you lose your job, and that money, you're living on social security, uh, you know, unemployment, and you're not making the money you used to make, well, what an impact that plays. Believe me, it, it, if you've never been there, it's scary. It really is. And it's, it's not something, that's why I said, uh, I, I got into this here, this started as a hobby slash full-time business, but let me tell you something, it's very scary, month after month. So be careful. If you're gonna get into this here, if you're gonna dive into this full-time, I wouldn't quit my day job just yet. I'm telling you, take it from me because when you don't have enough money coming in to cover those bills and you got to start tapping into your reserve account, it's a scary feeling, folks. It really is scary. So think about it. Anyway, I know that I'm going rambling on. I just wanted to share that with you guys. My name is Rich Bassini. You're watching Reseller News. Today is October 1st, 2018. I just want to say again, thank you again to all the new subscribers and thank you for tuning in and hanging in there with me. Have a great day. Until next time. Bye-bye now.